coming out and watching CB Docs a thon 2024. Uh, my name is Fortify. I am a Donkey Kong Country 2 speedrunner, um, as well as a speedrunner of a couple of other games you'll see next weekend. Um, I want to introduce my commentator really quick, um, Glan. Will you you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, what's up? I'm Glan. Uh, I've also had the misfortune of speedrunning this game. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a fun game, Copium. Um, I'm gonna be um, today. I'm gonna be doing a, a fun speed uh, category known as all swankies. It's a fairly new category, kind of a very 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 similar to any percent. Only with this uh, run, you visit all of the SwankyCon mini games that are in the uh, that are in the game, and you uh, you do them. So, um, yeah, fun little meme category, I guess you could call it. Um, I'm ready to go whenever um, time starts as soon as I press uh, go, uh, one player on this, so. We should be ready on time, so just count it down whenever you're ready. All right, sounds good. In three, two, one, go. All right, so. We're getting into World 1 here, um, so we kind of talked about the, the premise of this category, which is to visit all the swankies. Uh, other than that, uh, it's mostly similar to any percent. Uh, there is one kind of big difference from any percent. That's kind of why this category's picked up popularity recently, which is that we have to get banana coins to play the swanky minigames. Uh, so we wrote in a bunch of banana coins in a lot of levels. Uh, some of them are kind of in our way, but others we have to go a little out of the way for. So, I like this one here. Uh, so the first two worlds have uh, all dev intended warp barrels uh, to reach the end quickly. Um, there, Fortify tried to do a, um, a wrong warp. Unfortunately, messed up the setup a little bit. Uh, but we'll see more war wrong warps later. This one only saves a few seconds if you do it correctly. So. Arrows are all kind of in weird hidden spots, as you've seen from the first few levels. Not to interrupt, um, at some point, if you get a second, uh, let's try and bump Glan up a little more in Discord. Yeah, no problem. Glan, you're also welcome to just scream. Yeah, I mean... I try not to. <laughs> Bland screaming. <laughs> it's not really possible. So we're coming up to our first swanky okay. minigame here. Yeah. So this one actually causes fewer points than the others. This one it's three 1.2 points. The other ones are all going to be 1.2.3 points. Uh, so it means we need a total of 33 banana points for the entire run. Top sail here, quick little warp barrel here. Uh, then we're gonna get up onto the first boss in this game, which is uh, the biggest RNG factor in this run. Uh, so the first boss, Crow, uh, in the second phase of this fight, you have to hit him with uh, two eggs, four eggs in total, but in the second phase, two. Uh, and he has a 50 50 chance of giving you a fake egg or a real egg that you can actually throw at him. Uh, so this is a really annoying reset point. Uh, for, you know, if you're running this game in any sort of high level. Like, even getting a few fakes seems a lot of seconds here, so it's just a really annoying fight. Uh, Alright, this is, uh, seems like an average crow fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's just, uh... <laughs> But we do get to see something kind of cool for the routing of all swankies, which is that uh, at the top of this boss fight, there's two banana coins. Uh, most of the boss rooms, you know, but a lot of the boss fight rooms actually have two banana coins in them, which I think are kind of mainly there so that you get to save in the next world if you grab them, because saving costs coins for some reason. So just take the monkey. So here, Warfire is going to try to do another wrong warp, like he tried to do in 2-1. Um, 
Let's see. Let's see. Nice. Uh, so the way wrong warps work, actually I'll explain it later. But uh, here we're gonna do a cool strat called the big boy. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna get um, on this hook and throw Dixie at the cannon, and then before Dixie comes back, he'll jump into the air, and then he can repress B and hold it, and then when Dixie comes back to D, he'll do another jump in midair, and then he'll also get up the warp rail there a little faster than going the intended way. We get to use big boys in a few other places. Points here. Oops. Um, oh my God. This level is a bit unique in that if you take the warp, you're forced into hitting the goal like at high speed to get the prize. So we're gonna hesitate just a little bit so we can grab the hit point and the end target. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't be worth sitting through this long cutscene to grab the banana points off the end, but since we have to anyway. So it's just another quick. The next levels are both a couple quick warp barrels, so I'll talk about wrong warps a little bit. Um, so, kind of what's happening there is um, there are various ways to do what we call a clash. Which makes you, which allows you to kind of destroy an object that a Kong is holding uh, without actually ending the holding state. And so what happens there is that the game is keeping track of what, like, what object, like where in memory uh, the object is that the Kong is holding. And if he's in the holding state but not actually holding something, then um, he'll, the Kong will. Basically, the game will manipulate a different sprite that's occupying that memory slot that it thinks the Kong is holding. And we can use that to kind of move barrels and do other stuff. And then, can it just like mess with the memory a little bit? I don't really know too much in the specifics of it, but basically we'll trigger like the default failsafe of it not knowing where to send you, which is kind of just exiting the level and allowing you to go to the next one. It's so funny that I already have 17 lives. <laughs> <laughs> Zero Cleaver. Cleaver is a pretty hard boss fight. Uh, there's also a little bit of RNG here. The cannonball can spawn in three spots. It's not really major time variance. Uh, but mainly we're going to just try to get to the other side as quickly as possible because uh, the fireballs that he throws at you will kill the cannonball. So you want to kind of hit him before that. Here's going to try to do Lava Fly, which is a fairly precise fly across here. Um, and then he has to get Cleaver to swing at him once, because that's the trigger to spawn the hooks. So if he doesn't wait, then he'll soft lock the fight after he started. Or I think technically you can like lava fly back. Yeah, you, really you, you can lava fly back and, and it'll spawn the coins. It's just. Yeah. So, like I mentioned, in Crow, we get another couple banana coins in this here. That was a good Cleaver fight. It was! Yeah, now that uh, we're out of Worlds 2, um, all of the dev intended warp barrels are no longer a, a, a thing, so now I got to actually play the game. Yeah, now we're actually going to be playing full levels out. Uh, asterisk. <laughs> asterisk, yeah. Uh, but yeah, first of all, we got 3 1 here, Barrel Bayou. Uh, this level introduces these uh, spinning barrels that you have control over. We also ride this horrible animal book. I hate him very much. But he goes really fast, so unfortunately we have to use him. Heck, Rambi. Heck, Rambi. Heck, Rambi. I love Rambi. <laughs> you know, everyone's welcome to be wrong. Yeah, we all we're all entitled to our opinions. It's just every now and then those opinions are wrong. I, you know what I appreciate. So they're fortified uh, through Dixie into the second barrel, which actually doesn't save any time by itself, but he's setting up uh, what's called an airborne state for Dixie, which will allow him to do a super jump here, getting extra height off this damage boost, giving just enough height to be able to glide over this gap while it's spawn fly. Uh, the intended way of taking the barrel across is really slow, so... So Glimmer's Galleon here. This is, um, at least in any percent, this is like the only full water level in this game. And 
Water levels in all the DKC games are kind of notorious for just being spots you can bleed a lot of time. Uh, having really clean movement in these stages is really important because you have very slow acceleration underwater. So you want to like cut corners as closely as possible, but any bonk on a corner just kills your speed and you end up losing a lot of time. Yeah, this level is really a... Uh, kind of a... really good example of like... From like a beginner runner of the game to like a more intermediate to a really advanced top level runner because it's like you can see what like people are doing versus like oh i'm bonking here versus this person's not bonking there and it's a really good kind of a um, level to gauge like where you're at in the game it's it's become one of my favorite levels because of that yeah it, it feels really good to do cleanly but it is really really difficult DKC3 was at least a little more forgiving with the water levels, having rounded corners. Oh, yeah. Speaking of DKC3, now that we have a bunch of monkey enjoyers in the chat, we are $5 away from hitting the Donkey Kong Country 3 upgrade to all Kong letters percent run. Yeah. Uh, so please get a donation and I'll put the link in the chat. And all Kong letters is pretty cool in that game, too. It, it very much is, yeah. <laughs> And we also do the extra levels in Krematoa, like on the Japanese version. They'll probably talk about why that is during the run, but uh, that's something you don't normally see in other categories because it's generally slow. So it'll be pretty cool. Alright, so here we're in Crockett Clamber. This is a fun platforming stage. Unfortunately, we're not going to play half of it. We're going to do a wrong warp here. Uh, this works a little bit differently than I was explaining before. So here are the cutlass. Um, basically, we're not entirely sure how these wrong warps work, but essentially the cutlass uh, modifies its own... tries to modify one of its own internal values, but it ends up uh, applying to the barrel instead when we throw Dixie and have her get damaged. And then that changes the exit value while we're in the air, and hits that deep form failsafe. Uh, so the rattle battle here, this stage is uh, infamous among DC speedrunners because it's really horrible. This stage is horrifically bad. Yeah, you're you're uh, trying to I, use. Uh... Can I tell a? Can I tell a really short story? Yeah, of course. About this sure. So I did an interview with Essentia, one of the really old school uh, DKC2 runners way back in the day. And I asked her, like, what are some of the levels that were hard for you? And she said, a rattle battle. And I was like, rattle battle? Really? And she's like, yeah, it sucks. I hate this level. Right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, across time and space, uh, runners <laughs> of old also hate this level. Yeah. Funny enough. So this is probably a level that, like, people who play this game casually, like, remember fondly. Because it's kind of silly. The snake is funny looking. You got this silly music. But in speedruns, it's really awful. The snake is really bad at moving horizontally. And has just a really strange hitbox. And on top of that, the jumping guys actually, like, their hitbox actually changes shape between when they're standing on the ground and jumping. So sometimes you can, like, be about to land on them, and then they start jumping, and their hitbox changes shape, and you get damaged. And it spawned a uh, long-running meme in the community called Snake or Guy, where you post a screenshot of the snake and the guy very close, and then people have to guess who won the encounter. <laughs> Uh, so here we do another wrong warp, um, quick clash with the two beetles there. Uh, it's pretty free to do that with Dixie, it's a very generous frame window. Uh, so that stage isn't too bad. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, I need backup points now. Get a second. Uh, can we bring Glan up even more in Discord? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I hate to constantly be nudging him up, but uh, I'm used to it. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta get to it. We gotta spirit bomb Glan's microphone. That's what we need to do. Give it our. I, I don't know what percent it's at right now, but if it can go up to 200, yeah, it's probably I'm gonna, gonna put I gotta ask the neighbors in the chat room. Does this music remind you of your childhood? Because it reminds me of my childhood. It reminds XD. me of my childhood, XD. XD. Yeah, 
this stage is kind of annoying. Um, it's a barrel level, so the whole level basically is classic to hit barrels. There's not really much you can do to save time other than uh, a few uh, quick shots, which is basically you can shoot before a uh, barrel changes direction in a 3 frame window. Uh, is going to attempt vine clip here, very nice. So that's another use of the big boy I talked about earlier, to get up near the vine, and then you can abuse the, just kind of the weird collision shape of the, the brambles to be able to throw Dixie right through it. And here we have the worst boss in the game, Cudgel. This is what I like uh, to call the, uh, this is what I like to call the just chatting portion of my streams. Yeah. This boss takes about a minute and 40 seconds. And he just jumps around the entire time. That's it. Uh, Glan is now at 200%, so... So, uh, if we have any, like, donations or announcements or anything, this is a pretty great time for it. Right this second, we haven't gotten any new donations yet, because the chat's monkeying around! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, guys, please come in, put your donations in. We have a new incentive open up for the uh, short hike wearing a hat. Uh, so please, when you get the chance, hit that little donation link. It's either in the chat or underneath the stream in the the about section. Uh, go ahead and donate. You can put things towards a target and a poll. So you can vote on uh, Glan's language in uh, all uh, in of the kingdom later on, or on the protein choice for the speed dock sandwich poll. Um, yeah, get those donations in, start putting those towards incentives because we want to see more marathon. Oh, that's not good. I didn't grab the thing apparently. Okay, that's bad. At least this is a fast cycle. Yeah, if you like grab the barrel. Or like miss grabbing the barrel or like throw it too early or something. It just doesn't hit him or he breaks it. It's bad. The, the earlier cycles are slower, so it's less bad the later into the fight it happens, but Yeah. So this isn't one of the this isn't one of the coins that we grab in this route, but because I messed up that other one, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the old coins that are up here. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, so we have the first hornet, or the, like, hornet hive, whatever you call it, I don't know, stage in this game. Um, introduces the honey here, uh, which causes some interesting movements, so you, you kind of, like, grab onto the wall here. Uh, and climbing up the honey walls, honey climbing, is very difficult to do quickly. It's another spot you can, like, wait time, wait some frames and stuff. And, yeah, you can definitely notice that. Back up here. So grab the spider here. Uh, oh, sweater. What are you doing, buddy? Set up for a trick here called Scrolly Scroll, where you place a web like right near the hook, and then lets you basically grab the hook and get on Squitter at the same time. Which uh, you know the game gets confused as they say, and you kind of go really fast. Zoom, it saves, zoom. Uh, saves a little bit of time. It's possible to soft lock on it. So it's good that didn't happen. a little more money at the end here. As you can see, like, if you try to jump too early, then just nothing happens. And you just play a lot of time. Uh, like, most, like, rolls and jumps and stuff can be buffered in this game. I think you can't buffer money jumps, which is part of what makes it really difficult. Um, I do have an important question to ask, uh, the, the chat yeah. for, uh, for Speed Dogs right now. You should get Swag Balloon, is that the question? Uh, that was gonna be the second question. The first question were, uh, are there any jammers in the chat? Or who's, who's out disco in their jams? But yes, should I get Swag Balloon? Am I feeling swaggy today? I won't yet. I, I always get Swag Balloon. This is all swankies. It says it's encouraged to uh, to grab it in this category. So you know what? Maybe I will yeah. grab it. Yeah, this stage is uh, really boring. 
it's just an auto-scroller. Uh, there is a little optimization you can do in, like, uh, jumping earlier to the next part. And there's a couple small skips you can do. Uh, like the, the flare sections jumping on the, the dragonflies. I always miss the, uh, mess that one up. I don't know why. It's a... They're a little tricky. It's also kind of a funny stage in a way because uh, even though it's an auto scroller, Diddy's uh, better jump height actually saves a lot of time. He actually like, lose a lot of time to be Dixie in this stage. Alrighty, swag balloon. Yeah, it's time for spike balloon. See, it's free. It's so easy. So, uh, Bramble Scramble, this is kind of an awful stage. Um, oh, I was playing this game as a kid. This uh, stage made me hate everything. Uh, but we're gonna do a wrong one here. We're not gonna play most of it. Um, so, we gotta grab the Beetle here and then grab the Invincibility. And you can still oh. grab the Beetle with Invincibility if you have high frames. It's fine. Unfortunate. I haven't failed that in a bit, actually. Yeah, I... I think this is one of the trickier ones to learn, at least. It's not too bad once you get it down. But, uh, because of the wrong warps kind of involve, like, memory manipulation and stuff, the way uh, you spawn in sprites and stuff all matters. It's very nice. So because the game thought he was holding the uh, the bonus barrel there, Dixie was able to throw it, and then it just kind of ended up kicking him out of the level because he didn't know what to do. Uh, so we got another auto scroller here, Ricky Raced. Um, this is not a just chatting section. This level, like you will die in this level if you look on the screen. Yeah, quite literally. The cool thing about this stage is that it does have. Um visual cues as to when you are need to jump and when you're safe for a little bit, but even then they come up so rapidly that you need to be always watching, otherwise you're uh, you're gonna be losing a lot of time. Yeah, Especially because know, like, this, this stage times. doesn't have a halfway. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't have a halfway because I guess they couldn't make it really work properly with the race mechanic. Yeah. But they did add one in the GPA port. Yeah, I, I feel like I've run this game a lot and just died because I couldn't resist the temptation to look at chat during an autoscroller. Yeah. <laughs> the intrusive thoughts one. The voices. It gets you every time. <laughs> so we're gonna swap to Diddy here. Um, we won't have Diddy out for the next stage, but it loses a bit of like you can kind of get rolling faster at the beginning of a level. Like, you can kind of buffer a roll to start, so we want to already have to go. That doesn't really lose time to... Uh, swap to wasn't there. So thank goodness for those two Thanks. bonus ones in, um, Cornhole. <clears throat> So, Munhole Marsh, this is one of the most difficult levels in the game. Uh, just a lot of very tight platforming. You see him, like, diving underneath the water and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I, I can't really, like, put into words how hard this level is. <laughs> Safe Eagle Pit, nice. Very nice. For some reason, uh, we call it Eagle Pit, even though they're vultures. I don't know the lore on that one, but it's just what it's called. Uh, but we're gonna do another wrong warp in this stage too. Uh, this one is one of the less time-saving wrong warps because it's so late in the level. But, um, so we're bringing the cannonball with us because the cannon bonus, which is what we're going to use. Ah, oh, darn it! Wrong warp. Unfortunately, messed up the clash. The Diddy clashes with the beetles are pretty difficult. They have very weird vision cue. And I think there's a six frame window. But yeah, you can 
see, like, it's not a ton of the level left. This wrong orb, I think, saves about it's like 10 seconds or something. Uh, switch, please. Thank you. When you're talking about the frame windows, what's the frame rate of this game? 60. Yeah, the game's running at 60. Uh, he's trying to do a uh, strike called Bio Boy there, just a big boy. Uh, unfortunately missed it, but just back up. You can just barely reach the honey up there with a roll jump. Oh, that's right, I didn't grab the thing. Uh, I need a coin. Unfortunately, we have to beat Rambi again. At Rambi. Uh, but the second half of the stage is pretty easy. You just charge and jump on some beasts. There's really not much to it. Uh, has anyone nice. ever seen a Rhinoceros like fly through the air? Yeah. Enjoy it. It's only like a couple small strats you can do in this section. Like skipping the DK barrel at the end. Kind of a board way I'm talking bad about Randy is if somebody donates and the comment has me say something bad about Randy. <laughs> Alright, well you heard him. Get and if those you donations have five dollars you can upgrade the DKC three run which is next. We're about halfway through this run, so donate now. Okay, so we got King Zing here. This fight is pretty difficult actually. Um, they actually made him faster in the 1.1 version. Which is uh, what this is on. So 1.1 is needed to do basically all the or most of the raw orbs. Uh, so we gotta deal with the fast Kingsing. Uh, he can be really like it's really easy to miss him just because he goes so fast and he gotta manage his movement properly so he can dodge the spikes. But this is all pretty good. As we say in the DKC speedrun, don't sleep on the king. Yeah, it's, it's especially on 1.1, like Lan mentioned, he's moving a lot faster than on 1.0, so it's just really difficult to uh, miss a shot on him, and then all of a sudden you're like, because you're, you're kind of in this, like, you can almost call it a dance with King Zane, um, but like, missing one little hit just ruins that little sequence that you're in, so it's really difficult. So Underworld 5, Ghostly Grove, is a very fun stage, it's, it's a lot of good fun platforming. You have these ghost ropes that uh, disappear and reappear oh all the time. Gosh. For the most part, we don't really have to wait on them or anything. We're fast, we're not gonna lose them or anything. So yeah, it's just, uh, just a fun platforming stage. Yeah, this is a really good warm-up stage. Because it's just like pure movement. Nice despawn of the cloak. And yeah, that's true. Yeah. Now we have a very long auto scroller, so gamers, I want to see some donations so that they can be read in the two and a half minutes it takes to do this level. You heard the man. Do it. Uh, not a boss, by the way. Yeah. This is the ghost of Tupac. Tupac's oh, library. Tupac's library, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the cool thing about this stage is that it is a really long auto-scroller, but there are uh, all of the jumps that you're seeing me do right here are very, uh, for the most part, like, they're they're very uh, articulate, they're very, like, this is, I'm jumping at this exact moment, like, on purpose, like, if you're jumping on a uh, upward slope or into the door like that, you're actually moving a little bit faster in this level, um, compared to just going up the, uh, the track uh, on your own, so. Yeah, you want to jump, like, going down slopes, like, kind of right as you're, like, 
turning downwards, because then you'll have the downward speed already in your jump, but then you can do it like one forward more with that instead of riding down a hill. It saves like a little bit of time. You can save like, I think it's like two or three seconds over the whole stage by doing uh, all the jumps. Which is versus just kind of doing it casually. Yeah, which is pretty impressive because it's like two or three seconds. Oh, that's not that much, but at the same time, it's, it's two or three seconds. Even just intentionally hit some barrels because it's all rare out. Just so we know it's safe. Gusty Glade is another another just straight platforming level. Uh, this one is more difficult than Ghosty Grove because uh, we have the wind mechanic. Uh, the wind is a gimmick, by the way. Uh, the wind kind of turns on and off in fixed spots, so you know we don't have to worry about it randomly or anything. It's all routed out. But Pillars is a notorious section. Easily done. section and another section later the wind kind of goes back and forth so Fortify is waiting there until like just before it's about to like turn the other way and then he jumps. Same thing with the barrels there. And he's gonna want to do a goal swap here which I haven't talked about goal swaps. Um, but I mentioned kind of the airborne state back in 3.1. Uh, so goal swaps basically work if you have your second Kong in an airborne state as in like the game is kind of considering it to not be flat on the ground. And then if you swap Kongs on top of the goal, it'll basically think that you like landed on it because the Kong was airborne. Uh, so, uh, Parachute Panic here. Uh, this stage you're supposed to take clocks and ride down slowly and dodge the bees, but that's slow, as I said. So instead, we will fall very quickly and I haven't really mentioned before that like Diddy generally is uh, moves faster and jumps farther than Dixie, but Dixie has a few very uh, key places where she's good, and this is one of them because her glide is really important in this level to get around these bees. If we have a second, we did get a donation in. Yeah, we yes. have a second. We got a donation from Lena Kitty uh, in the amount of ten dollars. Who says, "Heck, Ramby, let's get <laughs> all Kong letter." Also, Rattle Battle best level. Uh, uh, that yeah. I don't agree with. <laughs> so, yeah, we're all we're all suffering here from this donation comment. We got Heck, Ramby, <laughs> and we got Rattle Battle best level. Um, but yeah, that finishes out the Donkey Kong Country three upgrade to all letters. So thank you everyone that donated for that for getting that incentive met. Uh, we still have more incentives left, obviously, so continue to donate. Uh, we're still trying to reach our our lofty goal to hit the 50,000 total by the end of the marathon of all of the marathons combined, which would be great. Uh, in addition to that, Lena voted for chicken burger in the protein poll, which is an underrated burger type. So I agree. would like to agree with that. Put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Alright, so now we're in Webwoods. This is another one of the hardest levels in the game. You're playing most of it as Squitter. Uh, and Squitter kind of can't really like touch any enemies, but you can shoot these webs at them. And also make the instant web platforms. So you're supposed to kind of like make the platform in front of you and then jump on it, but you can actually kind of spawn them and instantly open them. Uh, and if you do that kind of like right before the peak of your jump, you'll be able to land on them. So that's kind of what we're doing all well over here. How tight is that trick? Because I've seen other games that have a trick like that, and they're pretty the tight. The instant games. webs? It's not yeah. that bad. Um, you're, you're pressing two buttons at the same time, and I mean... You have a big window, you can do it, but like... You know, if you don't do it as high as you can, then you'll not be able to get up as quickly in some spots, so it can be a little difficult to do fully optimally. That was close. 
Yeah, that was, was kind of sketchy. Yeah, and this is the part where the guys uh, definitely jump down on you and don't de despawn off the top of the screen. Was that all in all, it was a pretty clean webwoods. It could have been slightly yeah, more optimized, but as much as you can ask for for webwoods. Yeah. Uh, so we had Creepy Crow, the ghost of Crow, and of course he brought RNG back with him. Uh, so there's three phases, you have to throw a barrel at him, and the barrel spawns either left, middle, or right. And some spawns are better than others. Uh, the optimal, I think, is middle, right, left, or something. I forget. Middle, right, middle. I think so. Alright, good right spawn. Left spawn loses a lot on that base. Like three seconds or something. Uh, aside from that, you just gotta uh, survive the onslaught of those crows. Mini Necky. Alright, pretty clean. Alright, right. right. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, I don't know why I was thinking left. I just work here. <laughs> yeah, I just work here. I have like a 42 and any person and I stop playing. Alright, we got Arctic Abyss here. Uh, here's an on guard stage. On guard the swordfish. There's a, a zip that you can do in this stage that saves, uh, like, optimally, Actually, like, how much does it save? Like, 15 ish seconds or so over optimal. And the, the keyword there is optimal fish movement. Um, but I, I, uh, been struggling with my Arctic zips lately, so. So, if there are any on guard fans in the chat room, I regret to inform you that you're wrong. <laughs> um, on guard is really, really bad in this game. Some people would uh, vehemently disagree with that, but it's the truth. He looks pretty cool though. I love his sword. He just has a really weird hitbox, like you can like lunge at an enemy and then get hit. It's just really strange the way it works. Hey Finn um, in the chat says aquatic Rambi. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. Oh, he is definitely water Rambi. In this game, anyway, DKC3, he's, he's just a Yeah, DKC3, god, he's, like, like unreally god incarnate. Like, if you get hit as Rambi, like, the game said no. <laughs> yeah. So there, uh, Fortify went up onto land, and then kind of did a, a crouch dive into the water. That was to avoid the fanfare. If you just hit the goal in the water, uh, it uses basically the last Y coordinate that you were standing on. Or that, like, you were at before you hit the goal. Uh, and standing on the ground resets it, so it would have triggered the slow fanfare if you just hit it directly. Because he went really high up on the stage. I hate grabbing that coin, it's so sketchy. A little camera manipulation well right here. Is, the stage is incredibly boring. Uh, it's yeah. a glorified auto scroller. It's not fun either. It's like really not a fun it's, stage. No. It's awful. <laughs> it's frustrating. There's a lot of tight stuff and you just get hit. Now we get a cool deep boost there. Skip some wind. Going around to the right there. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I I'd say the gamers should donate more to this good cause that Speed Doxathon is supporting. And the good cause of having Jet collect all caught letters in DKC3. I agree. And since we did meet that uh, all Kong letters in DKC3 incentive, the next one we have up is the run after that Kirby Air Ride bonus 5 hot That's dogs right. percent. The Kirby Air Ride and run. If you guys haven't seen that, it is 100% worth the money. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil what happens, you got to pay for it. Uh, but it is very fun, and you guys should definitely donate for the five hot dogs. So, Castle Crush. This is a very slow auto-scroller. This level takes four and a half minutes to beat. But the Donkey Gods have blessed us with a very fast rock warp in this level. Uh, because the DKC community is great at naming things, it's called Castler. Uh, 
Uh, so you do the uh, invisible holding there to basically be able to throw the cutlass up. And finally, we get to kill Rambi. <laughs> and the stage in doing so. Heck, Rambi. Clappers, All we uh, ever I wanted think... to do was help. <laughs> this is kind of a good, uh, it's kind of like a good chill level. Uh, I didn't mean that to be a pun, but you know, all six, because it's not super difficult. This has uh, become another one of my favorite stages because of the. It's very similar, in my opinion, to uh, Glimmers back in World 3. Whereas if you know what you're doing, it's very. kind of separates the, the newer runners from the very experienced ones. Yeah, as Bloom mentioned, there's an old myth that if you uh, do something weird with the glitched stuff in Castle Crush, it can like break your card, and it's not entirely true. Um, I think what happens is it like corrupts the save data so that it can't boot up, but you could cover that by like resetting the battery. There's no more risk than that. We got another wrong work here. Oh, unfortunately. This one is, uh... A little finicky with how you move to get the memory all set up in the right way. So, if you mess it up, you do have to kind of reset the area by going in the bonus. And then luckily it'll it'll work fine down here again. So the stage is fairly long. Honestly, the stage warpless is one of the most fun in the game. Are you so serious a lot of right now? Fast rope. Uh, yeah, I I don't like this wrong warp. It just I don't know. Difficult run warp for sure, but it's uh it's been giving me issues lately in practice, so yeah, it is a difficult run. I've got a lot of trouble with this one. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Try to spawn the cannon over here. Right, here's our last swanky minigame. Oh, we're short it's of coin. coin. I think uh, there's one in there's one in clappers. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you, 102. Did you go through a bonus, though? <laughs> Bonuses. Awful. Yeah, it's not a very good one. Oh, that's the DJ coin. That's not. I thought I could have sworn there was a something else up here. It's probably just like down. That's where it goes. All right. There. All right on the last swanky game. All right, only 52 lives. Yeah, I think we're. I think we might need a little bit more, just to be safe. Because, uh, because this level kind of sucks. Yeah, this level is awful. People really like this stage. They do not. Uh, the snake is very annoying to use. Completely. But the the second half is. I guess more fun. I don't know. It's with the it's with Squawks, so I agree. Squawks is a good animal buddy. This is kind of like an animal buddy gauntlet level. Oh. You the snake and then Squawks and then square for a little bit. Luckily we're not Rambi again. He couldn't really do anything in a vertical level. He can barely do anything in a horizontal level. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, there are strats for um, 
more optimal movement with the snake, but uh, they're, they're pretty difficult. They're really, really difficult. We got some tight squawks movement. Uh, squawks movement is pretty similar to swimming, as I talked about earlier. Um, just kind of, you don't want to like bump corners and stuff like that. Should play it safe here. This is a scary section. Get up in three head or up in four head? Oh, uh, almost three. Four head. All right, now we have All to right, we a really difficult boss, boss in the game. Up. Yeah, we gotta fight Kerosene. <laughs> Shoutouts to Kerosene, actually. <laughs> Two GBA enjoyers in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, now we get to go up to uh, to uh, Captain K. Rule's helicopter because you know that every every single pirate has a helicopter in their back pocket. Yeah. So like the the, the funny thing with K. Rule is that like the setting that you fight him in actually makes sense for like his persona in the previous game. Or the other way around. But like, DKC1, he has the pirate ship, which makes sense for him being a pirate here. And now he's in, like, a helicopter, which makes sense for him being a mad scientist in DKC3. And then even loops around, because in DKC3 he's in a castle, which makes sense for him being a king. Yeah. It's not what uh, I should do. Regis but... Brent is the stage's top. Uh, I didn't even talk about it at all, but what if I did race skip? So, uh, the trigger to start the race with Screech uh, doesn't go all the way up to the top wall, so you can actually just fly over it and not start the race. It takes about a second and a half. Uh, and it gives you all the time in the world to beat the level. As we're approaching the end here, we did get one more donation from Graceful Shutdown, who donated ten dollars and said, "Go fortify, go." Also, heck, ramp. Thank you, Graceful. Thank you, Graceful. Carol, um, in speedruns, this fight is basically an auto scroller. Um, you know, when you have his patterns memorized and stuff, he's not really difficult. Uh, not that he's not a hard boss in general. Uh, the only optimization you can do is basically throwing the cannonball as early as possible from the second in. Uh, you can throw it so early that like the dust particles effect doesn't even come on screen. Call it dustless. But it's pretty scary because if you throw too early, then basically you've lost that cycle and you have to do the next one. Which yeah. Is, like, basically, the way to recover it. Uh. <laughs> So he has three phases, three hits each. He starts doing like progressively more stuff. This one is just, like shooting, launching cannonballs at you. He'll do them in different patterns. Yeah. So I hope all the gamers are doing uh, well in the chat today. Nothing more to talk about, K roll. Yeah, it's just it's pretty much just avoid the uh, avoid the cannonballs, don't take damage. These ones are kinda of swirling in the air. The section's like a little tough to do with Diddy. Yeah, I'm sure I'm that do blue blue ditty for the fans. I'm gonna do blue ditty for the fans. Not not the whole thing. Not both blue cons. Not both both blue cons. Yeah, so here you got the uh, 
Oh, he's blue. Look at that. So this is wow, you know, crazy shoots like these gas puffs that do weird things to you. Uh, the funny glitch you can do if you get hit by it while you're throwing Dixie and then stop being close to it still be blue. Oh, blue Diddy. So the red ones just make you move slow. Um, they're not really hard to avoid when you know the setup. Uh, the purple ones invert your controls. So these look kind of like the important ones to avoid. Uh, Time's gonna be coming up. A good backup. Uh, Time's gonna be coming up as soon yeah. as the last uh, coin comes down. Very nice. And then we'll just jump over the last cannonball here. And that is time. Skadoosh. Donkey did one thing. <laughs> Literally did one exactly thing. <laughs> one, by the way. Yeah, type one in the chat. I knew you'd do it, Diddy, my boy. So yeah, that's uh, that's Donkey Kong Country 2 all swankies. That's uh, where that, it's the funny the funny category where you get to finish the uh, the, the game with like 55 lives because it's definitely needed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, thank you so much for uh, for watching this run. Um, shout outs to the uh, to Blan for uh, for doing commentary. And uh, I can't wait for your uh, Tears of the Kingdom All Dungeons run, because uh, that's, a, that's a decent video game right there. Um, yeah. Sh <laughs> Shoutouts to the rest of the Donkey community as well. Um, Void, A10CJ, uh, Jet Pastel, and of course uh, Graceful Shutdown for a kind of a pioneer in this category. So, um, yeah, that's a cool, cool little... Uh, little thing um i'm excited for uh i'm excited to be back uh next week for uh the final day of estat and uh yeah that's uh that's all i got <laughs> thank you so much fortifying thank you glenn for the commentary as well it was very insightful and i enjoyed it and uh looking forward to your run later tonight as well glenn and chat we will be right back with donkey kong country 3 which you guys have met the incentive for for upgrading all calm letters so we're gonna have a great time with that uh, but uh, let me go set up the sound for that one with cc and then we'll be back <laughs>